Hello, hello, and welcome to a new episode of Ramblings from Two Meddling Kids. I'm Edward Hunt, joined by my co-host, Mike Cunningham, and we are the Meddling Kids. And today, we'll be reviewing Blue Beetle. For those of you joining us for the first time, welcome. For those of you coming back, great to have you back. Uh, we like to review movies. So what we will do is we will never spoil anything in the first, I'd say like 15 minutes or so. We'll give you a zero to five review, give you some background. Then we'll start going into the plot summary a little bit to like almost like you were there watching the movie with us. And then we'll give you some of our specific likes and dislikes of the movies as well and potentially any messages uh, that the movie is trying to convey. But... Let's get started. Mike, zero to five. What did you give the Blue Beetle? Two and a half. Two and a half. Okay. I, um, so it was fun. Okay. I really enjoyed it. I think, I don't watch Cobra Kai, but I can see why mm -hmm. um, the guy that they um, cast for Jaime was casted. I think he he has a, definitely a charm to him. Mm -hmm. um, I really enjoy. I really like the suit. I think mm -hmm. it's the first time I've, I've really liked a superhero uh, Costume, suit, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, it was far less CGI than usual, yeah. which was nice. Um, this was a story that I wasn't really familiar with. Um, so, I mean, I was, did, did some research for this. But I think the movie had a lot of heart and not, a lot, not enough story. Okay. Yeah. And I think that's what took, it took me out of it. And I know you had mentioned earlier, maybe not on the podcast, but just in general, talking about like superhero fatigue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm starting to see it now. Okay. It's definitely... I didn't think so. Like, I I wasn't necessarily for superhero fatigue. It was fatigue of bad superhero movies. Okay, fair. But I'm... With this origin story, because that's what it is, um, I'm starting to get that fatigue as well now. Mm. We're just like... It's the same story over and over again with just a different mask. Yes. <laughs> the irony. Yep. Um, so, just like... I think this one was interesting because it's very focused on this um, Hispanic uh, character... Mm. Um, and his family and his culture and stuff like that. So I, I did appreciate that. But for the most part, it was just like, it was very much the same story with a different with different culture inserted into it. For sure. Um, and so I, I didn't I didn't really, um, like I said, I had fun, but it just, it it leaned too much into the heart of it, this mm -hmm. character. Which yeah, is yeah. just like, I feel like after a while, we got it. We got mm -hmm. it. He's, his family is important. And his family, family, family. Like That's his heart. Yeah. And they kept just pushing that. I was like, Jesus Christ, can we get to some... Superhero shit. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like something. Um, so it was like, uh, that's that's what I, I didn't enjoy. But it was like, I, I enjoyed the, uh, the. Oh, even actually, we just, well, actually, we just talked about this. I didn't enjoy the villain. The mm -hmm. villain seemed kind of weak yeah, in this one. They weren't right. Uh, but I guess it is, it's an origin story that I think the act did, not the actor, the uh, director was saying how he didn't want to make this a, a global, like, mm -hmm this character needs to save the world. He's just saving something more local, something more realistic. Which I'm cool with. That's which which, which I was adventure. cool with. But it was yeah. like, even with that being said, mm -hmm. this villain didn't, it did seem a little weird. Yeah. Um, didn't seem like a real good matchup. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, like, um, two and a half isn't terrible. Like, I did have fun. Okay. Like, the visuals yeah. were great. Um, like I said, I think this, it wasn't enough story for me that they leaned into, like, trying to let you mm -hmm. know that, it, like, this is what this, this is important to this character. This is what this character is about, type of thing, and it didn't really land for me because it was like after I was like, I get that. Yeah. What else? Fair. Yeah, type yeah. of thing. So like two and a half. I would definitely. I would say go see it. Like mm -hmm. I'm not like it, it. wasn't like terrible. Yeah. Or anything like that. It just. Uh, I. I think it's like I said. I think it's it's very much the, um, the uh, tired of the same superhero mm -hmm. story. Fair. Like there's only so many, <laughs> so many Uncle Ben's. Yeah. So, so. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you know. Yeah. It's just again Uncle Ben again Uncle Ben. It's like yeah. you got a you got a positive a male role model. Get him out yeah, of here. Exactly. <laughs> now he's gonna die. Yeah. <laughs> but no, all in all, definitely it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so two and a half for me. Cool. I'm giving it a three. Though I completely agree with you on the fact that it's the same story you've heard time and time again. It's. Basically, the superhero origin story was kind of perfected in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man in 2002. Mm -hmm. And they have just kind of continued to copy that with, you know, plug-and-play characters with slightly different, slight differences kind of since then. And I enjoyed it, and I think it's a better iteration than what we've gotten in the past of other superhero movies that have been coming out. Mm -hmm. um, I, can't, I can't necessarily say from an origin perspective, because there haven't been quite as many origin stories. Recently, no. Recently, but just the superhero movies in general have kind of been lacking. 
and not mm-hmm. to cut you up. But yeah, I think yeah. what also didn't help is the one of the antagonists in this movie mm-hmm. had a more interesting backstory than the yes the yeah, protagonist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when Carapax you talking about? Yeah, yeah, and it was just like, how do you that that's the story I want to see. Mm-hmm. Like it was, I think. I, I'm interested if this is the case always, but it was like they make these heroes very bland. And I guess I'll, I'll give you a Bella Swan, mm-hmm. a homegirl from um, Fifty Shades, yeah. or something like that, where like the the reader or the audience can yeah. put themselves on that shoe. Mm-hmm. But it was like making a character so bland, they're boring. If yeah. it can be anybody who can, like yeah. what makes this character special? Mm-hmm. I always talk about Ant Man, yeah, yeah. in, in a way where it's just like he can't fight, like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he get big, he get small. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So even with this character, right, they didn't give you any back story to him, yeah. right? He was out here like fighting and stuff like that. And it was like, where you get this? Yeah, what yeah. are you doing? That was the suit. I guess. Yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. Was, I think it was, it was one of those things. Was like they made this character so bland mm-hmm. that it, 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 it there, there wasn't really anything there. Yeah, and I guess to make it a blanket or whatever it is, or like a mirror, mm-hmm. if you if you will. Because it was like I saw Carap- uh, like um, Car- Carapax yeah. backstory, and I'm just like, no, no, we need. Yeah. More scenes with I would that? like to know more. No, no, no. Yeah. You don't need to know this. <laughs> no, 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 no. You don't need Flash to know that. Flashback, that's it? Yeah. Oh, you sons of bees. No. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I cut no, you no, absolutely. But yeah, so with that, I agree. And so it's, yeah, it's a recipe that's been done and perfected and done time and time again. And I completely agree that it's a little like, oh, man, I'm getting tired of this. But at the same time, like I kind of like I made a metaphor uh, for like, the blog I was talking to you about, like writing in the review, it's like it's like when you figure out how to make something really well, when you make something that's really tasty, so then you just make it over and over and over again, so you get tired of it. Mm. But at the end of the day, it's still pretty tasty. Yeah. And that was my thought with this movie: is like, yes, I'm a little tired of these but origin stories, delicious. but it was still. I mean, I wouldn't say delicious. <laughs> I would not say delicious. There were flaws, but it was still a pretty tasty. Like it's called chocolate cake. It was still a pretty tasty slice mm. of cake. So I'm giving it a three out of five. But there is plenty that it can get better from, from like some of the character interactions were a little weak. Even like some of the family members, I was like, that's a little too much. I didn't like yeah. really like them as much. There's some of the family members are great. Uncle Ben in this movie was great. I <laughs> loved Uncle Ben in this movie. <laughs> he was a phenomenal Uncle Ben. Um, and then also like some, even the chemistry between, uh, you know, Jamie and the, I can't remember. No, it's Jaime, really, respect him. Oh yeah, sorry, yeah, Jaime, my apologies. <laughs> and yeah. Jenny, yeah. And Jaime and Jenny, that's what it was, yeah. And yeah, you can't, you can't have the romantic link be, we're both attractive. Yeah, like. it was literally all it was. We're, like, we're both attractive, so we should kiss. And I'm like, no, I'm not feeling that one. <laughs> yeah, that was literally all they had going for them is they're both attractive and in this movie, so they must fall in love. But... As you know, superhero movies go, it was entertaining. There were some good action sequences. Um, I might have also just become Uncle Ben stole the show for me a little bit. And then, yeah, so three out of five, that's what I'll give you. And I agree. Like, check it out in theaters, especially. And, like, I was trying to really look at this in the lens of what if this was the first superhero movie I've ever seen, right? And I think if you look at it, like, through that lens, it's still just three out of five because it was still a solid movie. Mm-hmm. But again, Sam Raimi's Spider Man was better. Yeah. Stuff like that. But yeah, so we're still saying, hey, go check it out. It was good. And, like, I did also really enjoy, like, the representation of this movie. Mm-hmm. That was really cool. Like, his, fa- like, Jaime's family, like, especially with Jaime's family, there's one thing they just have a superhero from, like, a different ethnicity than, like, yeah. a white guy. Um, but then to have, like, his family really show their culture and who they were in a way, that's so one of the first times. I, I was reading something earlier about this, mm-hmm. and the, the director said, being that he, like, that mm-hmm. from their culture, there was no way that um, he could have a secret identity from his family. Fair. Maybe the world, yeah, yeah, yeah. but not his family. So that's why, like, immediate, like, they were part of his mm-hmm. transformation, like, that first okay. transformation. It wasn't like a Spider-Man where, like, he, you know, yeah. hit it or something like that. It was like... His fa- it, like once again, it's very much family led, but mm-hmm. I think that I was just like Jesus girl, What about him? Like, yeah, there was times with the family. I'm just like, okay, look, like I don't need so much of the other family. Yeah. I would like more of Jaime right now. That'd be because it's not the Incredibles or something. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like at the end of the day, the yeah. super one is just yeah, him exactly. But yeah, so three out of five for me, two and a half out of five for Mike. Still a pretty solid movie overall, all in all. All right, let's get into some background of this movie. What's everyone else saying about it? How much did it cost to make? Okay, Blue Beetle came out August 18th, 2023. Mm-hmm. Two hours and seven minutes is the runtime. The budget was $120 million. Box office, expensive. we won't know. Yeah. I think it's projected to make 25 to $32 million in its first weekend. Okay. Which is yeah. not great. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, yeah, no, it's not great. But it's, it is also a... 
a, a lower tier DC character, right? Yeah, I um, I I know Blue Beetle because I've read more DC comics than Marvel comics. Mm -hmm. I think he showed up in one of like the you know like one of the Crisis, one of the yeah, the Crisis, crisis. Of, and that was the second yeah. Blue Beetle. Actually. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because like I said, I, I didn't know much about this character. I got introduced to him through like one of the Young Justice okay movies yeah. or like the Teen Titans or something, something like, like that. that. And it was yeah. it was too late. I wasn't actually watching them heavy, mm -hmm. but they're just on HBO Max. But yeah, so I wasn't truly familiar with this. So when I did the research, yeah. It's been three iterations. Mm -hmm. Jaime was the, the the last one that they've done. Yeah, but yeah, I think that the Infinite Earth one was the guy uh, Ted Cord. Oh, that was okay. when he got introduced, but he wasn't the original either. God, yeah, yeah. So, okay. Um, <laughs> but once again, just yeah. research. Oh uh, yeah. So the box office, I think the projection is twenty five to thirty two million in its opening weekend, which is okay. terrible. Yeah, we'll see. But once again, it's DC. DC ha has had diminishing returns. Mm -hmm. You had Shazam making not Shazam, sorry. Uh, Black Adam making 67 mil in its yeah. first weekend, even and that had a bigger name. That had so, the rock, yeah. So. And there weren't really any names in this one. I guess besides George Lopez. Yeah, George Lopez, Susan Sarandon. Oh yeah, yeah, Susan Sarandon, sure. Uh, but still, like, yeah, but they're still not like the titular. You know, they're not like like you know the rock yeah. was. You know. So yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes, we have a 77 from the critics, 93 from the audience. Okay. Yeah. But I think it's probably leaning into the fact that since it, the representation and the culture, they really. They really did it just like mm -hmm. the, the culture justice, so I think the audience is really um, enjoying that. For sure, yeah, uh, which makes sense. Yeah. Genre is action, adventure, sci-fi. It's yep. directed by Angel Manuel Soto, who I think this I think he's done a bunch of short films or something like that. His mm -hmm. only other um, film that I saw was uh, Charm City Kings. Okay, yeah. I think it came out a few years ago. I had like Meek Mill in it. It was mm -hmm. about like the bike culture in Baltimore, I believe. Yeah, I remember, I didn't see it, but I remember hearing about yeah. it or like, you know, seeing some of it. I can't remember. Uh, the cast, we have Zolo, uh, Madrin, Mad, Madruna, sorry, I'm, that is not it. As, <laughs> as I may say. Mm -hmm. um, he's uh, from, uh, what's, what is it, uh, Cobra Kai. Mm -hmm. Um, Susan Sarandon as Victoria Cord, uh, Harvey uh, Gu Guillen as Dr. Sanchez. He's from um, What We Do in the Shadows. I've seen. Oh that. yes, yeah, 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 absolutely. As yeah. A Guillermo, uh, yeah. Becky G as a uh, Kaija, uh, Kaijada. Sorry. Oh yeah, the suit. That is the suit. Yeah, yeah. George Lopez as Uncle Rudy. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Bruna Ma McQueen McQuinzen, sorry, as a uh, Jenny. Okay. And Raul uh, Trujillo as uh, Carapax. Okay. Apologies for the um, mispronunciations. I can't say. Blame it on his tongue, not his heart. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the tagline is, he's a superhero whether he likes it or not. That's fair. Yeah, he really did not like being a superhero <laughs> for a long time. And I'm like, why wouldn't you just love this, dude? But eh. Well, I, was, I feel like just the... And I, that's what somebody was saying. Like they did the transformation. When I saw the first trailer, I was reading the comments. And it was mm. like, they did the transformation for Blue Beetle Justice. Okay. Because yeah. of the fact that it is one of the most painful... Fair. Like, granted, losing someone, like yeah. Spider-Man's or like even like Superman or some shit like yeah. that. But it was just like, no, no. The way that that fusion happened, mm -hmm. the, the bonding happened with the scab was very painful for yeah, me. Yeah, fair. Um, but yeah, that's but worth it. I'd do it. I'd do it. <laughs> I would take that. I'd take that bet. Anyway, so cool. That is the background. Thank you, Mike. So now we're going to start getting into the summary of our movie, but before we do a quick word from our sponsors, us and me, uh, I'm Edward Hunt. I'm a real estate agent on the Just Be team with Compass. Compass is a nationwide brokerage, and my team is all about finding where you're meant to be. Um, if you am in the DMV, so that's DC, Maryland, and Virginia. So if you would like advice on the market, you need connections with a great lender, or you need connections with some phenomenal contractors, then please feel free to reach out any time and I can connect you with those resources. A great thing about Compass as well is since we are nationwide, that means even if you're in, let's just say Kentucky, I can find you a great agent in Kentucky that can help you do whatever it is you need to do that's home related. Uh, from there as well, also I'm writing a comic, uh, hunt.comics. And uh, the first one should be posted online soon, and I'm just waiting to get the prints back, uh, and then I'll be able to start selling it slash giving it to all my Kickstarter backers. All right, let's get into it. Blue Beetle. So it's, you know, microscopic, so it's kind of like a bug's life, if I remember correctly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it just opens up quick scene. You get introduced to uh, Victoria Cord and mm -hmm. Carapax. Um, they f she flies to an island. Her team has been searching for the Scarab, mm -hmm. this like, alien uh, artifact. Um, and then she says she's been searching for 15 years and she feels like she's finally found it. Yeah. Um, it's in like this, they're trying to cut into this 
this giant orb or mm-hmm. whatever that they feel like will take hours or whatever. But she has a feeling that the 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 scarab is in like they found it. How? I was like, which, but also it doesn't huh. make sense later. We'll talk about. Yeah, that. no, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we jump to um, maybe present day or I don't know. Like, yeah, they yeah. didn't do well with this. But uh, Jaime is uh, returning uh, home from college. He went mm-hmm. to Gotham Law School or some shit like that. Oh, he was pre-law or something, I thought. Oh, no, no. It said he graduated from Gotham Law School. Gotcha. And he had like a Gotham Law like hoodie on later. Okay. And I'm just yeah. like, Gotham has law? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you know a lot what? of crime. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you got to outsource your lawyer yeah. if you're from Gotham. You can't get them from home. Yeah, no. <laughs> They're just crooks. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, so he's returning home after graduating from college. Um, you see him, uh, his family is uh, waiting for him yeah. at the airport. And they say that, you know, there's something they need to tell him, but mm-hmm. they want to keep it light. Like, he hasn't been home in a few yeah. years. And he's back to Palmera City. Fictional Palmera City. In Texas, yes. Right. It's in Texas? Yeah. Okay, I assumed it was like a floor. I assumed no, it was like a floor. Yeah. Okay, got you. All right. <laughs> but, but yeah, so... Yeah. Uh, yeah, so he... Meets up with his family. You see his mom, his dad, his sister, his grandmother, mm-hmm. um, and and then we meet uh, like so. You know they have an exchange, or whatever. Yeah. and then we meet Uncle Rudy, mm-hmm. who has this giant like uh, what was it the, the truck? Or yeah, the truck taco. I think is what he calls yeah, the truck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he comes in and they take him to get some food since mm-hmm. he hasn't been home, and then immediately his sister is just like. Mom and dad have something to tell you. Yeah, it's like she's not, uh, you know. Dickhead uh, is what yeah. I call it. <laughs> I was going to say not subtle. Uh, there right. we go. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking Gen Z. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> so they tell her that, uh, tell him, sorry, that um, they're losing the house. Mm-hmm. Uh, they lost, the, I think, the auto shop that yes. the, the, the family worked at. And that his dad had a heart attack. Just bam, bam, bam. Like, welcome home, son. Let's go. <laughs> Jab, cross, hook. Just yeah. bam. Oh. And so, like, he's devastated. Obviously, because they kept him out of the loop. But, too, like, he felt like he would have come home mm-hmm. and he could have helped. He could have done something. Yeah. And I think this was, like, very relatable. Like, for people who have gone away to college or something like that to try to do better. But, like... Mm-hmm. If you're not able to go home back and forth, then you are. You do feel like you you're abandoning mm-hmm. your 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 family and stuff like that. Um, and I, I never felt like that. I was just like, <laughs> I'll see y'all later. <laughs> <laughs> Deuces. Uh, <laughs> coming back. Here. <laughs> but yeah, so like, he feels devastated. That he couldn't help his family. And then, once again, we get early on mm-hmm. how close is. Which is they're close, but he didn't know none of this. Yeah. So. so yeah, so they were hiding that from him. I, I, it, it didn't. Yeah, it didn't make sense because it was like even if he went away to Gotham, fictional Gotham, whatever the mm-hmm. fuck it is. Yeah, you didn't come home for the summers. Or yeah, whatever. right. Yeah, there's a lot of reasons. <laughs> That's what I said. Like you were, you were just gone for four years. Were you in the army? Yeah. <laughs> well, no. He, he, they even mentioned because he did come home sometimes for breaks on like his birthday and shit like that. You did know? it? Well, he said his 21st birthday. This is later. They're talking about him coming home. Remember my 21st birthday here? He's only 22. Oh, yeah. So he must have come home briefly. But that's what, that's what I'm saying. I think it was like, and this is what I was saying about the, the hammering, the whole, the family aspect of it. It was just like, that was done at the airport yeah. and at this this meeting here, like the, the closeness of it. And mm-hmm. a few scenes later with his sister, with his dad. So it was just yeah, like, yeah. but a whole movie of you, us being reminded. It was like, mm-hmm. Jesus Christ, we know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, so like, yeah, we we see that he feels, you know, he feels responsible for not being there to help his family. Mm -hmm. How many and spending all their money? Yeah, (laughs) at college. (laughs) (laughs) And so he's uh, having a beer on the roof with his sister, saying how like he's going to use his degree to get a good job to save the house, Mm -hmm. save the family, like get them a mansion. They also mention the fact that like, um, and I think this is one of the messages of the movie talking about like. uh, gentrification and like mm-hmm. like uh contractors coming in and pushing out mm-hmm. you know the locals just so they can bring in people with money or whatever yeah um so he was saying uh how he's gonna get you know he's gonna use his degree to help his family to to help them do better yeah um and then it jumps in time i don't see i don't even know how much longer i think it was a couple days yeah that's it what was it was like in the in the, in the wikipedia it was like a few months Oh, okay. But maybe still, but with a brief, because I, I was yeah. thinking maybe a year or something like that. Yeah, like, yeah. I, are you, they didn't do well with time. And yeah. Like, well, what if they do, if they say specific times, then that means you can, like, date it. So that way, <laughs> they're just, like, general vague time. Yeah. But yeah. So, 
Uh, it jumps to a few months later, <laughs> supposedly, um, and he has a he's working. <laughs> It was funny. This introduction to that scene was funny. Him like wearing like the sunglasses. I think all the problem white. is yeah. it was ruined in the trailer, uh, so it didn't have the same. Fair. Hit. Okay. I I didn't see the trailer. Okay. So yeah. So but in the trailer, that's how they introduced it. It was just like it's a. Uh, I just want to rap, rap or whatever yeah, with yeah. Uh, the Uzi song. Mm-hmm. And then it was like, excuse me, Mr. Reyes, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So it was like for me, it was ruined because it didn't have the same hit. Gotcha. You. So I did not. That was okay. not ruined for me. So I was like, ha, that was funny. Yeah. Because he's not. He doesn't live in this house. <laughs> he needs to. He's working here. Yeah. But yeah. So. So he's actually working at the Cords house, and mm-hmm. the Cords are the uh, family who like has a major company. They've been one that been doing the development. I think they basically own Palmera. So yes. It seems like yeah. And so like yeah, they're house cleaners or something like that. Uh, yeah, they're yeah they're just there's a bunch of them though. Like yeah, there are. That's a lot. It's a very large staff for one. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so uh, his sister like he's cleaning gum off of like the bottom of a table or something like that. Mm-hmm. And his sister actually got him the job. And then we see. Uh, both Victoria and Carapac, Carapac, sorry, <clears throat> enter. He was mm-hmm. like, I'm going to say something to her. Yeah. And so he says, hi. And I'm like, why? Hi. Cause it was like, I so it'd be different if it was like, because that's why I didn't even know what he did for school until yeah. like a few scenes later. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, maybe he's a scientist and she's yeah. a scientist. Or like something. Well, like, why would you, you know, what is this yeah, yeah. fascination with like, you know, talking to her? But anyway. Talks to her, she ignores him, she goes in the house with Carapax, and we get introduced to um, Jenny, her mm-hmm. niece. Yeah. Um, and she's, like, questioning, like, what were you doing in, like, the island that we had seen her at before? Mm-hmm. She, and she mentions that uh, the comp like, she's, she's, I guess, Jenny's a part of the board, but, like, being, like, the, the, um, the daughter of, like, mm-hmm. a, a rich person, like, she's just been kind of, like, touring the world, like, yeah. not really, like, doing philanthropy philanthropy but like not really caring is yeah, like yeah. just doing stuff to do stuff because you're wealthy yeah um but well, now she wants to think she's doing it right yeah I guess. You know, <laughs> but, but now she yeah. wants to know you know what uh victoria is doing because mm-hmm. um victoria i think she started a company with her father yeah but instead of giving in a company to her when he passed mm-hmm. she gave it to jenny's father yeah who was you know like her brother? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her, yeah, her brother, yeah, her, her yeah. brother, and yeah. So then, and he took it because they were making weapons before, yes. and then the brother tried to do more like charitable things mm-hmm. with the company in yeah. general, and, and it then, really tanked the company. So like yeah. she, she was able to like switch it around by yeah. move, they move, doing more um, weapon things, yeah, well, like uh, selling weapons. Very, very. I guess Tony Stark. She's done, yeah. It has been done before. That's yeah, all. exactly. No, this, this took a lot from <laughs> Iron Man. This took a lot. From, it was like Spider Man and Iron Man was kind of this movie. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so like they're having an argument or whatever, and while they're having this argument, uh, Victoria and Jenny, uh, Jaime and his sister uh, Mila, I'll call her. I couldn't yeah. pronounce her real name. Well, Carapax just really wants to punch Jenny. Yeah, yeah. Just, that's what Carapax wants to do one thing in this movie, and that's just punch the crap out so, of So like, yeah, like they have yeah. snuck into the house or whatever, and so like as they're having this argument, uh, Jenny steps to, or either either which way. Um, they're in each other's faces. Yeah. And uh, Victoria just goes to, <laughs> basically to Carapax was like, hit on my light where he's yeah. like, say less. Yeah. <laughs> just like, I'm going to get this girl. I'm like, yeah. all right. Like, and you see that he has a robotic hand, yeah. so I was just like, oh, he's, he didn't even use his human hand. <laughs> we're going to punch you with the robotic I'm like, oh, no, that's not bad. And so Jaime speaks up and says, like, he's, she said back off or whatever. Yeah. And then at that time, his sister comes out of the bathroom. And so they both get fired. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they're sitting outside waiting for a car and she's like he's like how, how far is the car he's like 40 minutes I'm like yeah damn <laughs> uh, <laughs> but then this is why uh, Jenny comes out now he tries to stop her and you know say like uh, you know are you okay or whatever mm-hmm. and, you know sorry that happened and so being grateful for him being you know brave you know stepping to her her aunt uh, she says, um, give me your number. Maybe I can get you a job. Yeah. Her, well, her being grateful is like the most inauthentic. Yeah. She does not come off as very likely. She's like, okay, let me see if I can get you a job. Thanks, I guess. Let me see if I can get you a job. I need to go. I'm not giving y'all a ride. That's what, I thought she was at least going to give them a ride. Like, no, no. She was like, no, nah, fuck off. I need to go. Right? Y'all are waiting 40 minutes. I heard you. their cars are waiting 45 minutes. That's nice. Sucks to be poor. And then she just like takes off. <laughs> I'm like, all right, this bitch. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So, oh, Jesus Christ. So Jaime <laughs> goes home that night and he's like, he can't sleep. So he has a, a moment with his dad, which I really liked. It yep. was like, um, his dad is having like, 
Oh, fucking product placement. Epsilon tequila. <laughs> yeah. Epsilon. Quality tequila for a quality person. <laughs> well, yeah, so his dad is having a drink outside, yeah. and he's like, you know, don't tell your mother. Obviously, mm-hmm. he had a heart attack, so he's, you know, he's watching his health. Yeah. And um, he just, uh, it was. I think it was a heartfelt moment saying, like, because Jaime feels like, uh, I mean, he just got fired. Yeah. He has a degree, but, like, no sense of direction. Mm-hmm. And, and what's his purpose? Yeah, you know, and, and his dad says, you know, I mean, our that's our journey through life is finding our purpose. Yeah. And uh, so it's like it basically reassuring him is like, yeah, you don't know now, but yeah. you will type of thing. As I put it, um, <laughs> Jaime's father is Uncle Ben on steroids. Right? What He's great su- power. Yeah, he is super <laughs> Uncle Ben, all right? Because just everything, I love this character. Like, the first thing he did was like, like this is very the very beginning. It'll be quick, but like when he tipped the waitress twenty five percent after yeah. he doesn't have a job, yeah. and he lives in the house, and he still tips him twenty five percent. I'm like, that's a good dude. So then, like this conversation after, I'm like, God, I love this man. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm just like, hell yeah, what a good guy. And he drinks Epsilon quality tea. <laughs> <laughs> Epsilon sponsor us. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so with the encouragement from his dad, he texts Jenny and says, um, if that job offer is still sorry, <laughs> text her, hey, you up. <laughs> uh, so he texts her and saying that he'll take the job, her job yeah. offer. Mm-hmm. So the next day, which I will say, reading that text, it was a very kind of like abrupt, blunt text. Like, hey, I'll take you up on the offer of you offering me a job. I was like, <laughs> wouldn't you just say, hey? I would say like, hey, it was great meeting you. I'd love to see you know, to meet He's tomorrow. Fresh out of college, he doesn't know the etiquette. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, eesh. <laughs> I read that. I'm surprised like, he just give her a thumbs up yeah, like she was so supposed so to know what it means. You know that generation. Though. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know what's going on. You know, 22 year olds. <laughs> but yeah, so he's, you know, he takes her up on her offer. So the next day he gets, you know, dressed up um, as, you know, interview ready. Mm-hmm. His uh, uncle and his family drop him off. He yeah. had this embarrassing moment with them, like cheering him on yeah. outside of the uh, court, uh, court uh, building. Um, and it was like, <laughs> It was, it was. I mean, it was very sweet, but I'm just like, bruh. Yeah. I can, this is why my family doesn't know what I do. Yeah. Oh, okay. but, but that was like that is so real. Like, yeah, yeah, no, so I know. That's what no, but that's what, that's yeah. why I was embarrassing because it was yeah. like it was so relatable. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so he goes into the building, and then you, I think you immediately see kind of this, um, not even just the chords. I think mm-hmm. his sister and his like his uh, family definitely had some animosity towards the chord family. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it was like not even the chorus, like the, even the receptionist was like, she said it, he said his name was Jaime. Yeah. And she goes, okay, Jamie. And I was like, no, no. Which for the record, so he was in the computer then. I don't know. So that's the that, only reason know. why that would make sense is because, and why I'm saying this is I had this thought because like he tells her, her his name is Jaime, but she was like, oh, you're not in the system. Go sit down or something. But then she, she calls him Jamie. But it's like, if he wasn't I in think, the system. So I thought it was more like. And it's any any person of uh, you know like from a like culture that's not white that for sure. says their name and like the automatic wh- like white person thing to do or anybody like yeah. not in that culture is to just to Americanize it. Yeah, but that doesn't make sense unless you could read the name. Because if someone tells you your name is Jaime, you would think it starts. You would a just say person, Jaime. You would okay. say Jaime, or like a white person oh, thinks okay. Jaime starts with an H, not a J. You know, it's so like why is she saying oh, okay. Jamie? Fair enough. See, I saw it. I just saw. It. I guess because they they didn't establish whether or not his name was in the system. That, so that's a hundred. What you said. That's a hundred percent what they were going for. They mm. were going for a white person being rude and dismissive to like another ethnicity. Yeah. But she said that he wasn't really in the system. So how could she even read the yeah. name to mispronounce I, I, I it the you. wrong way? Yeah. It's all from there. But yeah, I mean, either way, she's being the bitch. Yeah. <laughs> so she's yeah. very dismissive of him. Just tells him to go. You know, sit down. Mm-hmm. At the same time, we see. Jenny uh, is uh, disguised in like a lab tech uh, suit. And she knows how to pickpocket people. She, she bumps into <laughs> Dr. Sanchez, who's just leaving his lab, steals his key card, sneaks in, um, and sees that he's working with the scarab. Mm-hmm. And so she puts it into a, um, a box or whatever, like his, uh, from his like takeout or something yeah, like yeah. that. And sneaks out and like is just trying to get a beeline out of the out of the building. Mm-hmm. Um, Doctor Sanchez comes back, realizes that she stole somebody has stolen it. Yeah. So he's you know tells him to lock down the building. How does he get back in without a key card? I don't know. Okay. And how does he not realize that the burger that's just chilling on there that the burger was in a box? No, the burger was out. Oh, was it? Well, it was yeah. out when he got back, but I thought she took the. Burger no, 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 no. So oh, initially okay. it was like the burger was on the outside of the box. Got you. Okay. I did notice that as a hungry motherfucker, yeah. but, <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. but, uh, but yeah, so he orders the building to be on lockdown. 
uh, Jenny is taking the elevator trying to exit the building. Jaime sees her. Mm-hmm. And this is what pissed me. I was like, Brett, relax. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is still an office building. Yeah. Yeah. You say some yeah. college dorm. You should yeah. be hollering at some woman. They, they, they do different. They do things differently in Gotham. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I said. He needs justice. Right. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so he chases her down in the lobby, uh, and she's like, "Not right now, not right now." But he's kind of being persistent. I guess, you know, obviously because he you know needs a job. Yeah, yeah. And so. Jenny, realizing that she won't be able to make it out of the building, mm-hmm. um, tell, gives him the box and is like, uh, don't open it, don't look at it, just yeah. take it and get out of here. Yeah. She's just like, hey, you might die. I'm not going to tell you you might die from this because they're looking for this. Just take it and get out of here. And not s- doing likable things. Here, yeah. <laughs> and so Jaime leaves, he goes home, and his sister, I think this was in the trailer as well, she was just like, so you went to get his jobs. And you came back with a burger. Like, yeah. <laughs> and so, like, the family is sitting around the table. The box is on the table as well. Mm-hmm. And, and they're like, what is in it? And he was like, I don't know. She told me not to open it. Yeah. So, somebody, I, is it his sister, I assume? Opens sister or Rudy? Yeah. Opens, Actually, probably Rudy. Yeah. Yeah. Open the box and they see that uh, it's the scarab. And mm-hmm. they don't know what it is or whatever. And so, his sister picks it up. And I'm just, I just, so I'm just like... It's it's the gremlins all over again. Yeah. <laughs> I gave you simple rules to simple, follow. <laughs> very simple. <laughs> so his, his sister takes it out of the box and he's I mean, he's like, stop playing, stop playing. So she passes it to Rudy. Mm-hmm. He gets it away from Rudy and then the as he's holding it, the scarab activates. Yeah. And it comes alive and it like kinda scans him and then jumps on his face face hugger stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and then like uh like so he's he's screaming, his mom and grandma and dad are screaming, mm-hmm. sister screaming. Rudy uh tries to take it off. Yeah. There's a energy blast that knocks him back. Mm-hmm. And then it was just like I think this was all actually in the trailer. Yeah. Or a lot of it. But it was just like it is the this initial transformation scene. So it removes itself from his face, goes like crawls down his shirt through his back, and then he was like, I can't see it. It was like I think it's inside of me. Yeah. And it was like that's what threw me off. This is the cartoon that's up. Yeah. It's like if something, no disrespect, but is under your skin. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know how it got there. What orifice? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, You're gonna know. Yeah. It went through his butt. Uh, like, like, Even that, it was just like you don't just. Yeah, you, you would feel a scare of this big. You're gonna if something went up your up. fucking nose. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're gonna feel that going up your butt. I'm just throwing that out. I think they, they yeah they threw it out of the joke, and I'm just sitting there as the doctor. I'm just like I don't. That doesn't sound right. I, just, <laughs> I, told, I was like, yeah, Rudy's got something. Rudy's got something <laughs> that went in that man's butt. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> so, do you see it underneath his like a light underneath his skin briefly, and then like the um, this is when we start seeing that transformation mm-hmm. where like the. The symbiote, uh, t- sorry, not symbiote, Jesus Christ, because it, it was very much Venom. Yeah. Um, <laughs> see, other things. Yeah, God yeah, damn it, that's two. Yeah, yeah. That's three now. Well, even like when like it starts taking over and you have all the black stuff going yeah, down, yeah, yeah. you're like, that's Venom. Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah, Venom, Spider-Man. Yeah. Venom, Spider-Man, fucking uh, Iron Man. Yep, there Keep you it at time. <laughs> but yeah, so this transformation team actually was really cool. Yep. Yeah. And like I said earlier, I think it showed the why the Blue Beetle is different from other... Uh, Superheroes or whatever, it was just like, bro, this like this was truly painful. I mean, I guess you fall into a vat because that's half of Batman's villains. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> acid. This is like, like the railings in Gotham are not up to code. Yeah, no, 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 no. So many people have fallen into this shit. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, so um, yeah, the 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 scarab attaches itself to his spine, and then just from there starts like just sinking with like his. Uh, uh, his brain and like mm-hmm. this is where you see like this bl- these black tentacles like burning off his clothes yeah. like cutting like coming out of his skin mm-hmm. um, his, even his eyes were like bleeding and stuff yeah, like yeah. that like that, that it looked terribly painful and also it's gonna destroy your clothes every time you yeah. see a blue beetle that sucks <laughs> it was very much the question of like the, the, the werewolves in twilight yeah. the incredible hulk yeah. <laughs> exactly <laughs> it's, it's breaking it's breaking plot holes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so like you see the full transformation um, and then once he's transformed, he's in this blue beetle um, armored suit, mm-hmm. and he hears uh, something in, in his uh, in his head. But his his uh, family can't hear. Yeah. And then it says like system processing and stuff like that. And immediately, so basically the suit is being um, is recalibrating to this new host. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And so he blasts out of the, <laughs> out of the house. <laughs> 
<laughs> up into the air. He like goes into space for a bit, and then he comes back down, and it's just like recalibrating the armor and the the wings and uh, like all these. Different he things. destroys a bridge basically. Yeah, like, he knocked down three concrete st- supports <laughs> on this bridge, and the bridge did not fall. That thing's about to fall any day now. If it hasn't fallen yet, it's about to, <laughs> and it's all his fault. <laughs> It's I Shazam all over again. Yeah. <laughs> it's not too What's all the DC and bridges? <laughs> yeah, this is where we've seen the trailer too. Like he cuts the bus in half mm-hmm. and all this stuff. And I'm just like, how many people has this suit killed? All right, because this that's suit... like a bu- All right, so a full bus yeah. definitely got people standing up. I don't know what you said. No, yeah, that's good. <laughs> definitely a couple people at least lost an arm. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so I think this scene was like really cool though, mm-hmm. like showing the cap- some of the capabilities of the of the suit. Yeah. Um, and like I said, I think this is one of one of my maybe because it was more practical. Yeah, I guess it was like less CGI mm-hmm. than yeah. most. Uh, but yeah, so he like the suit basically calibrates to him. He goes back. It goes back to the house, and then it just disappears. And you see that he's like fully naked. Yeah. And I think this like these are the. I think you're right. It's just George Lopez. Yeah. Because yeah. some of the other family members, their jokes didn't really land. Mm-hmm. But George Lopez is a seasoned vet when it comes to yeah. his comedy. George Lopez is fine. Yeah. So just like. A, <laughs> He's naked, and it was just like so. They go to cover him up, and right. like these making fun of his like right. <laughs> his private areas. So. Yeah. Oh god, it was just so fucking funny. Yeah. But um, yeah. So he passes out, mm-hmm. um, and then he wakes up, and I think yeah, he realizes he's naked. He's like, what the yeah. fuck? He freaks out. He gets puts clothing on, and then like I think he finally and, he, and we see that the scarab is like yes, in you see that yeah. So it's like poking out of his skin, mm-hmm. but it's like literally attached to his spine. Yeah. So he didn't see it at first, then he sees it and he freaks out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and now they're trying to figure out like how to, like what is what is he do? Like I need to talk to to Jenny mm-hmm. yeah, because yeah. I mean that's his only point of contact. Mm-hmm. And so he steals uh, what's his name Rudy's truck, yeah, Taco, Taco. <laughs> to go back to the core company. To sh- like no no no, he went to go to her apartment I think because uh, his sister had mentioned like mm, because yeah. he had been stalking her uh, Instagram and yeah. like she had done some checks. And figured out where her apartment was. So I think he was going back to her apartment. Okay, is that where that was? Okay, yes. That makes a lot more sense. Because mm-hmm. at first I thought she might have been in Core Tower too. Yeah. And I was like, she's been in Core Tower for the past 12 <laughs> hours? I'm like, what? Got you. But yeah, so he goes by her apartment. And as he's there, he sees her like kind of sneaking and hiding. And like, so she re- he calls her. She jumps in the car. And she says, go, go, go. And like, yeah. he pauses for a little bit. And you see that there's a... Like, uh, tr- like soldiers chasing yeah, like her. Spec op soldiers with like full on, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they shoot at the car a bit, but then he's able to get away. Yeah. And then you go back to, he takes her back to the house, and you just hear Rudy <laughs> throw a fit because they <laughs> shot up his <laughs> <laughs> But it. It was so funny because he just came in like real, like he, he had yelled and he had like tried to calm down and like be cool. <laughs> I think you're right, yeah. George Lopez like really was yeah. like the shining light. <laughs> hey, from like the, yeah. Humor wise, there was like maybe once or twice I was like maybe a little too over the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's very much like uh, Melissa McCarthy being allowed to like rant or yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like um, uh, improv. Yeah, but it was a whole. Yeah, he was really funny. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, like ninety when you're funny, ninety percent of the time you can. Have yeah, 100%. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Yep, exactly. But uh, yeah, so Jenny gives a backstory. It tells about the the scarab was given to her dad. It's mm-hmm. called the scarab. It's like a a weapon of like you know mass destruction or something like mm-hmm. a world ending yeah. weapon. Or something like that, and then like his family's like, well, so why did you give it to like? Because she, she starts apologizing. She was like, I didn't mean for you to mm-hmm. to do this to your family. Like it hadn't worked at all. It's never activated. Yeah, before. it's never activated. So yeah. she didn't think anything of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so she's like, uh, but the only because Jaime is like, I don't, I want to get this off of me. Like, yeah. what, what do we do? And she mentions that. Uh, Which again, I wouldn't want to get it off. I was like, I'll take the superpowers. I'm just throwing that out there. I'm like, yeah, okay. He was literally just like, what should I do with my life? Oh, I have superpowers. I don't want these, though. I need to figure out what I need to do with my life. All right, man. Come on. You have superpowers, bro. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so she was like, it was given to her father at some point. So like, um, they need to get the, a key. Mm-hmm. And that key is at Cord Industries. Yeah. So they're like, you know, they're not going to be able to just go. Mm-hmm. Or whatever. So like Rudy's like, oh, I have a machine. Because <laughs> of course he does. Yeah. yeah. It was, it was, uh, all right. All right. Yeah, I guess he does. I guess he does. So while uh, Rudy is finishing his machine, we jump back to uh, Victoria. She's at some mm. some party. Yeah. And uh, Car- Carapax comes and tells her that they have an issue. Like mm-hmm. the um, Jenny escaped. Um, and she, because she had help, mm-hmm. and so she's like, "We need to find him." Because she's talking to some general, 
yeah. saying that because they're going to use their her plan is to use the Scarab's technology to create something called the Omni or something. The OMAC. OMAC. One sorry, man yes. army. Uh, wait, one man army. Something. Yeah. Yeah. I, I keep thinking protocol, but it was OMAC. Yeah. 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 Anyway, be a one man army something. Yeah, it was. But yeah, so she's using the Scarab's technology to create this OMAC to, you know, basically like to like create armies. Super soldiers. Super right. soldiers. Like one soldier with that is like stronger than yeah. 100 or something. And so yeah. like she's, they're trying to sell it. So yeah. she was talking to the general about it. She wants to make Iron Man suits for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and so she tells uh, Carapax to, you know, find, find, mm. find her. So we jump back to Rudy's completed machine. They drive back to. Uh, Cord. Mm -hmm. um, he turns on his machine, which is basically just that scrambles the security camera. Yeah, I it's guess. just like well, he's like, oh, they have lasers and blah 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 blah. That we need to get around. I know how to do it, and it just messes up the security footage. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, I guess. <laughs> which but also too, there's no other security guards at all in court. I, I was like, bro, y'all just push it on lockdown. I'm yeah. like. They made it seem like, okay, it's going to be on some Mission Impossible, James Bond. Shit. Nope. <laughs> they literally just walked in the front door. Yeah, I thought she used her key card. She used her key card, which, <laughs> why would that still be working right now? And then just in the lobby, so watch. Just like, That's what we need. Grab it. Good. Let's get out of here. <laughs> so she grabs some Ted watch that yeah. was behind some case. And as they're walking out, uh, Kyra Pax who just really wants to punch Jack. And then, yeah. all he wants to do is just, he's like, let <laughs> me motivation through this stuff. Like, I was told to do something. I was not able to do that. <laughs> so I must do it now. I must do it or I cannot complete. <laughs> I must comply. And I'm like, all right, buddy. <laughs> and so this is where we get the first, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the first uh, showdown. So like, Showdown? Uh, yeah, or the first fight. Fight, yeah. Right. <laughs> Showdown fight, yeah. <laughs> Battle. We're, I'm scared because I'm not good at words. <laughs> but, uh, bang, bang. You know, <laughs> they, you know. Yeah, you know, like the people like, uh, this like this. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we get the first showdown between Carapax and Jaime. Mm -hmm. Carapax, you're right. I think, I thought maybe he was going to punch Jenny. He was going to punch Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was trying to punch him too. And then, like, Jaime. I guess the hand was like, how yeah, you know, the hand was in face. front of Jenny's face. And I'm like, oh, he didn't give a fuck about Jaime. He wanted to kill her. This guy is a legend. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so uh, the suit activates again. Mm -hmm. uh, Jaime fights uh, Carapax, and you just see that they did. Like, Carapax has also kind of a yeah. an armored suit, but as you can tell, it's very, like, a little, you know. It's, it's not as, it's not yeah, there Yeah, it's yet. more of a beta-tested one. It's not there yet. Yeah. Fully. Um, and so he gets uh, defeated, and th th after he's on the ground, and even the, the, uh, the suit says... Oh, he's been incapacitated or something like that. Right. And then immediately, like, two swords come out. And yeah. He's like, let's finish him. And yeah. Jaime's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, because the suit's taken over for yeah, this fight. Yeah, because I think this is what, too, was what... I think they said it more than they showed it, but it was, like, kind of this fight between... Yes. ...the suit and Jaime. And, yeah. like, it... There's supposed to be some symbiosis, but it's not there yet. So mm -hmm. they're constantly fighting for control, yeah, 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 or something like that, or like because yeah, it, it mentions that later too. Like, yeah, yeah the but it was just like it. It that's once again since it leans so much into the family stuff, mm -hmm. it didn't give you these the his fighting like with the suit and stuff right. like that. Yeah, because yeah, the suit was just like you're getting your ass whooped. I'm gonna take over. So uh, yeah, I'll, I'll let you know how this. This is how you fight. <laughs> and then the suit was like, "This is how you fight, bitch." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it beats the crap out of character. Stop coming, bitching from my family. <laughs> Jesus, like, come on, man. this is not nice. Yeah, no, no. But yeah, so the suit goes to kill Carapax, mm -hmm. and Tommy's like, "No, no, no, we don't, we don't kill." Yeah. But in that, and the suit's like, "All right, cool, that's fine." But because of that, Carapax uh, wakes up and he goes to kill. And he goes to curb stop. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh gee, he literally puts his head on the curb. Yeah. I'm like. Oh shit! Yeah, <laughs> but uh, Rudy comes. Mm -hmm. uh, he does a maneuver and throws his machine. Rudy's a pro driver. Yeah, <laughs> fucking fast and furious. <laughs> yeah, launches the machine that scrambled into Carrie Pass like knocks. Yeah, him knocks out. him out. They're yeah. able to save Jaime. Um, and once you know, once Jaime, I think he was knocked out. So once he wakes up, they realize that they um, where they need to go. So like they yeah. go to Jenny's um, childhood home. Yes, which has been abandoned since she was like eight years old or mm -hmm. something like that. She said, and so using the watch, they go through the house and there's like uh, you see like this beetle kind of like a yeah some not tapestry but it's like on the on the floor or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it was just like she uses the watch to open up the secret chamber. Was this before or after the interrupted kiss? 
Before. Before. Okay, gosh. Gotcha. I'm trying they to just remember. got to the house. They gotcha. just got okay. to the house. Because I'm trying to remember when she put her dad's PJs on. <laughs> <laughs> and now she was like, oh. She was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you're wearing papa's pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what she said. Like, yeah, oh, damn. <laughs> She's like, mm-hmm. I put a, use this pipe. <laughs> 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 no, say not now, honey. I'm too busy. <laughs> now, now come tuck me in. <laughs> I like Goldilocks. Tell me Goldilocks. <laughs> but, yeah. So she uses the TED watch to activate some secret chamber that's mm-hmm. in the mansion. And this is where Jaime and Rudy find out that her dad was Ted Cord, who was the Blue Beetle. Yes. Which is which was apparently some like vigilante, mm-hmm. some Batman style vigilante. Some weak ass Batman. <laughs> <laughs> some, little, some little bitch Batman. <laughs> because like he so and this is when we find out that t- her dad was given the um the scarab by the former owner, some doctor Dan something, Jesus Christ, I didn't write it down and I apologize for that. But in the actual in the comics, mm-hmm. that he was the first Blue Beetle. Okay. Yeah. Who it it um Attached itself to him. So how do you give it to him if he he died? Uh, so but then how do you give it to him? I I don't know. I think maybe they work together. Oh, okay, gotcha. I was just like it was just like, hey, I'm dead. Take but also, the, he was his introduction was through the like you were saying the crisis on uh, in yeah. the Earth uh, mm-hmm. in the comic. Uh, but yeah, so this is where they find out like because he Rudy says that uh, Jaime was a baby when it was happening, mm-hmm. but basically back in the day, uh, her her father was Batman ended up in is it Palma Palma. What is the city? Uh, uh, Palmera. Palmera, yeah. sorry. Okay, Palmera. Yeah. yeah, so he was Palmera City's version of Batman. Yeah. Um, so he didn't, yeah, he didn't have the powers of his suit because it didn't activate for him. And this is where Uncle Rudy messed up because he called Batman a fascist. Yeah. Fuck you, Uncle Rudy. Right? And I said the hero. God damn it. it was yeah. so, so that's what's weird to me, too. And I, there's two things. One, uh, George Lopez during the interviews when they could interview before mm-hmm. the strike, he was like, Rudy said that. <laughs> George Lopez, like he had to really clean that shit up. He did, right? Because like when the first when the first trailers came out, everybody was like, "Say something else about Batman." Yeah, I know. I was like, "I'll say that again." I dare you, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> so that's one thing. Number two, I'm always confused in these worlds, like the the character's understanding of yeah. the superheroes that we know, right? He did say he's not Superman. He did Batman does exist. Yeah. He's in Gotham. So he But when he called Batman a fascist, why? No, uh, Unless you know who the fuck Bruce Wayne is. Yeah, you know exactly. what I'm saying? Yeah. That amazing. doesn't that's what I'm saying. Like what's the level of understanding? Yeah, I don't know. You know? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Cause like why else would you why would would you say that? Because they're Cause trying Batman to, is basically Ted fucking Cord. Well they're trying to be edgy. Yeah, yeah. Was, I think that's what throws me off. Oftentimes with these, some of the, I guess the more more the lower tier, mm-hmm. yeah. um, <clears throat> comic book characters that reference other ones. Yeah, because it's like, are you reading the comic books? Yeah, exactly. Or do that this person because he went to Gotham. Yeah, yeah. law. So yeah, at this like, point, you should know. It's like, yeah, the, yo, Batman's in the Justice League, bro. He's like one of the greatest heroes in the entire fucking world. Yeah, yeah. so it's like I think that's that's what that's why that comment didn't make sense. Mm-hmm. Um, because like trying to understand like what this. What these characters understanding of that character is. Fair. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> so uh, as Rudy uh, is at the computer console, like trying to figure, trying to do some uh, research on the scarab and how to remove it, mm-hmm. um, he mentions that the Jaime stinks. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. So this is when uh, Jenny takes him so he can, you know, get a change of clothes in the mm-hmm. shower and like she um, after he he uh, gets dressed, they have a you know heart to heart moment. Um, about the fact that like she hadn't been back to the house in a while because after um, <clears throat> her mother passed, yeah, her mother died when she was six. Yeah, and then... and her, her her dad kind of just like became obsessed with like his blue beetle persona, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and like I think it was like a lot of a lot came rushing back, like the fact that like um, she hadn't seen her mother's paintings in a while, mm-hmm. and she hadn't been to this house in a while. So still, her father ended up disappearing. Like he, because he would, as a vigilante, he would disappear for like days or weeks on end, and then yeah. all of one day he just didn't come back. Yeah. So obviously, her reliving all these painful memories and stuff means she really wants to kiss him. Yeah. Guy. That's you know, that's just what she wants to do now for sure. You know, she's like dealing with all this tumultuous emotion. She's like, I know what I need to do. Tongue this guy down, and like. Yeah. So that came out of the blue for me personally. I didn't really a little see bit, it. but yeah. I think it was like yeah, it was kind of. I guess they had, they did have to show you that there was some chemistry between yeah. these. Well, I mean, it, it opens with like literally uh, Jaime's sister of Forever being like, "Oh, she likes you. She thinks you're attractive." And Jaime's like, "Oh, so Jaime's clearly into her, but she has shown really no, yeah. mm-hmm. you know." But anyway, it's a movie. Anyway, so Rudy interrupts their moment, um, basically saying that uh, the only way for 
uh, him to uh, remove this guy would be to die. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and Jaime kind of like, you know, freaks out. So he, he like he runs away. Jenny goes to kind of um, to console him, but like uh, Rudy's like, no, I, I got this. Yeah, yeah. And so like he finds uh, Jaime on the roof. Because Rudy's like, I know where he'll go. You know where he's gonna go in this, in this new house. Never <laughs> 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 but, yeah. It's just, it'd be more fun if he was just like he went to go and we got lost. <laughs> <in the gym. laughs> How many bathrooms are there? <laughs> exactly. That would have been comedy. Yeah. <laughs> so he finds Jaime on the on the roof. Yeah. And he was like, I knew you would go here. Mm-hmm. And he basically just gives him the background on the fact that like uh, Jaime's dad had uh, brought because of their bro- um, he's Uncle Rudy, so he's uh, Jaime's dad's brother. And he goes, um, you know, he brought me here when he was like. Rudy was 10, his father was 19, yeah. and he worked whatever job he could so that he could bring his family in and keep mm-hmm. them together. It was like, that's what Rezes do. Like, we yeah. we fight, but we we fight for our family. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was like, with this motivation, you know, uh, it, it, it's the... <laughs> I guess he has two Uncle Ben's. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, talk, well, that was something, and actually this is part of my dislike uh, for later on, but like literally everyone in his family is Uncle Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Which means everybody's catching a bullet. <laughs> exactly. But no, because like literally everyone in this movie has like their heart-to-heart moment with him, but like the, my only, my biggest complaint with that is like his father's heart-to-heart moment, amazing. Yeah. And Uncle Rudy's heart-to-heart moment, Good. Yeah. His mom's heart to heart moment. Eh. Yeah, it was just like you come back. And yeah, like, it was like. Eh. Yeah, so, but it's like so like everyone doesn't need to be Uncle Ben. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like some people can be Aunt May. Aunt May's <laughs> right? I love it. Those <laughs> eyes. <laughs> Somebody needs to mention the eyes. Yeah, it's, like, it's true, the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so as they're on, um, Jenny comes on the roof as well, and as they're on the rooftop, they see a helicopter heading towards. Um, this like I guess uh, out of the city towards uh, the Reyes. So they house. just know they're just like if they're going that way, they're going to yes. the house. And yeah. so like, they, or Jaime's like, shit, we need to go protect the rest of the family. Mm-hmm. And so he tries in vain to try to activate the suit, and then um, he realizes that the suit is tasked with protecting him, so he yeah. needs to put himself in danger. So he jumps off the roof. The suit activates. He ruins pops. Papa's pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> just, just fucks that up. So obviously Jenny's not in. <laughs> she is living. <laughs> she just like so I liked you for one reason because you filled out Papa's pajamas the right way. All right. <laughs> Forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, just really destroys <laughs> with the memory she has of her father. <laughs> Like, all right, yeah. Oh, God, that's fucking funny. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, Jaime goes um, to his family, and we see the um, this uh, victorious soldiers infiltrate the house. Yeah. They, find, they find the family in, like, some bedroom, force them all outside, mm-hmm. you know, on their knees or whatever, and, like, um, they're searching the house for it. If they can't find Jaime, at least trying to find the scarab. Yeah. And his dad says, don't say anything mm-hmm. or whatever, and, like... You mean Uncle Ben? <laughs> And so Jaime arrives and he takes out a few guards or whatever and then like uh, Victoria, sorry, yeah, she realizes, holy shit, like mm-hmm. he, somebody activated it. Yeah. Because they didn't even know, like they just know that he had it. They mm-hmm. didn't know that, actually I guess they did know because of uh, Carapax. Um, oh, fair. Right, you're right. right. Yeah, yeah. But uh, she hadn't seen it so she's mm-hmm. like, she, let's see what you can do. So like uh, she orders her men to shoot at him but she's, he's yeah. bulletproof. Mm-hmm. And then so she's like, oh, shoot at the family. Like, Jesus <laughs> yeah, right. Right. She's just like, how can we test this out? Let's kill them. <laughs> she's evil. Yeah. He, they, yeah, so, <laughs> they tried it. Well, like, earlier on, they were just like, well, she wasn't like this until you know her father passed over on yeah. her for some, like give the company to her brother. I'm like, but she's making a lot of calls. Like, she's I was about to say, I think friend. that guy was right. Yeah, yeah, misogynistic, but yeah, possibly right. Yeah, like, I guess he was sexist, but oh, man, like, okay. <laughs> but yeah, so he yeah, had the... Um, the our soldiers aim the guns at the family, mm-hmm. and Jaime protects them. And then he uh, he asks the suit to like you know help him yeah. take take out the rest of the but non lethally because yeah. initially the <laughs> the suit is like are we doing this? Yeah. He straight terminated. <laughs> like, no 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 wait 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 no no the T S the T one thousand exactly yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so and I think this is cool. Like these were cool scenes. We were just like seeing the abilities of the mm-hmm. suit. The only thing I will say was just like with a suit like this is very much like the Flash or Quicksilver, like Superman or some shit like that. We're yeah. just like, 
oh, you're overpowered. So, like, what's the... Yeah. What obstacle is really going to be there for you? For sure. Yeah, this, yeah. this is very leading up to an Iron Man same versus same. Like, yep. Oh, yeah. 100%. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, but it was, it was still cool to see. But it was like... I think it also got very John Wick-ish. Where it was just right. like, these fight scenes are going too long. Like, Fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit. Yeah, just like, all right, how are we incapacitating these guys? We get how you're doing it. Yeah. Just kind of do it, move on. And so... He tells his family to run. Mm-hmm. Uh, they run, but his sister falls, uh, and so his dad tries to protect her. And so, and I think he gets knocked. Oh, he gets. Oh, that dude hits the oh. fuck out of his dad. Yeah, he does. And then um, he's able to like uh, protect his, you know, protect his uh, dad and sister. Tells him to get. Tells his sister to get his dad out of there, but as his dad is running away, he uh, has a heart attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as he, as Jaime is trying to help him because he's incontest- incapacitated most of the guards. Uh, Carapax hits him with um, some claw thing, yeah, like the claw machine. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it like it um, dulls the. Um, I think because like, it electrocutes, so yeah. it fucks up the you know the you know interactions. You yeah. know, like because so you know nerve impulse is electricity, so I, that's what I'm assuming from the okay. science perspective. So sense. like with the electricity yeah. shocking yeah. him, because I was I, mean, like, I was actually surprised. Yeah. Why, why weren't they doing that the whole time type of thing? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, using electricity the yeah. entire time. Yeah, that would make more sense. But anyway, uh, yeah. So this claw. Um, Stops Jaime from being able to use the suit, so he mm-hmm. just has to sit there and watch his dad have a heart attack. And Carapax got the grand prize. Yeah, <laughs> Carapax drags him away, <laughs> yeah. puts him on a helicopter. We see that um, his family, you know, his his mom and his grandmother, uh, grandmother go back. Yeah. To oh, and during this whole thing, the house is burning down. And the house is burning as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so um, this is when also Rudy and uh, Jenny arrive. Mm-hmm. Finally. Yeah. She's like, how far? Well, how far is your mansion, lady? Well, I mean, like. <laughs> Remember, they're in the rich area. <laughs> These are the poor area. It's called sarcasm, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Ted is a vigilante as the Blue Beetle. When he's not the Blue Beetle, he's like, no, 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 I'm not going to live in there. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'll save your little city. Yeah, yeah. I will live in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so Rudy and Jenny arrive, um, and like they're trying to call the cops, but it was, mm-hmm. it's, we find out it was just too late. His dad has passed away. Yeah. Um, well, they do get the ambulance over there. And yeah, the ambulance. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so Jaime is taken taken away, so they you know for Victoria's purposes, the family like grieves uh, briefly, but then the grandmother, you know, being the matriarch of the family, she just goes, "There will be a time to cry, but this mm-hmm. isn't it. Yeah, you need to be brave because we need to go save Jaime." Mm-hmm. Which, for the record, how in the world are they going to do that? When I said. Y'all motherfuckers yeah. couldn't take out the guard. I know, bro. I'm just like, uh, okay. <laughs> but this is what I'm saying. It was just like, oh, brother, y'all not the Incredibles, but yeah. <laughs> I like the manifesting. Right? The Once manifest. again, <laughs> everybody needs a speech. Yeah. But now I need soldiers on the ground, and y'all ain't it. Yep, 100%. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but yeah, so her, his grandmother gives a speech. You know, once again, I think... Out of the, all the speeches that were given, I guess this one wasn't given to Jaime, but all the yeah. speeches that were given, dads, mm-hmm. grandmothers, Rudy's, yeah. uh, like I, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. everyone got his chance. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, so she, you know, she tells, and especially to um, his sister, she, he's like, "There will be a time to carve right now. We need to go save Jaime." Yep. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so Jenny says, "I think I might know where she's taking him." And then they also mention the fact that it was like, "What are we gonna do? Mm-hmm. Like they have weapons, we don't." Yeah. And so they go back to her dad's uh, Blue Beetle cave, um, and he had, like, some rinky The big beetle bug thing. Beetle yeah. machine? Yeah, yeah. It's the uh, the be- beetle mobile. Yeah. It's a beetle mobile. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> this is why This is why the fatigue sets in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, so uh, they know that she's going to... And I guess... It makes sense that, uh, what's her name? Jenny did mention this island earlier mm-hmm. when she confronted Victoria. Yeah. Uh, so they know where he's going to be. They have the beetle to take them over to fly. Mm-hmm. And then also the beetle has a bunch of... Because I guess Ted Cord was very much like Iron Man since mm-hmm. he did not have powers. Or even Batman since he didn't have powers. He had a bunch of gadgets. Yeah. Um, and so they fly over. As they're flying over, Jaime wakes up and he's in a... He's trapped in a, a machine, mm-hmm. and they're going to extract the data yeah. from the from the scarab now that it's activated. I, I, okay, fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm just like, okay, I guess you can extract the data. I don't understand how. Well, that's what it was like. It was one of those things like when they were searching for it, and this is real quick mm-hmm. because it, obviously the opening scene is them searching for the scarab. They made it seem like it was like they said it was alien tech, but it was like uh, like. Uh, 
like an Aztec stuff or like yeah. it seemed like it was like ancient mm-hmm. yeah, in yeah, a way. Yeah. But it was just like if she was searching for it, how the fuck did home the original Blue Beetle get it? Yeah. And then her dad get it. Yep. Because she knew about it. And like Jenny her, knew about and it. And then so. what did her dad do with it when he disappeared that they could then search for 15 years to try and find That's it? What, it was just like, it was. it, 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 it didn't link. It find was, out next time in the sequel. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, so yeah, they're using the, the, the Scarab uh, data to not only power the uh, OMAX, mm-hmm. but to power a uh, Carapac suit. So they have the right adapter to plug in. The yeah, obviously, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it's USB. It's USB probably. Yeah, well, it's USB-C. USB-C. Yeah, yeah. It's USB-C. <laughs> yeah. It's USB-C. <laughs> USB-C. That's, that's really it. You just need a one cord. I feel like the world <laughs> is one cord in yeah. it. Yeah. One yeah. cord to rule them all, if you will. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but um, as but Dr. Sanchez mentions that it was like, uh, this extraction might kill High Man. She's yeah. like, cool, it's better. It's easier to take the yeah. scarab off a corpse anyway. <laughs> Uh, and so we see uh, Carapax linked to the linked to uh, Jaime mm-hmm. getting the data transfer, and then it was also being uh, linked to the other o- uh, Omax. The family, oh sorry, go, oh. no, you're good. Yeah, yeah. The family, uh, the rest of the family actually uh, arrives mm-hmm. at the island, and, and then they just, just kill a ton of people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he literally stepped on Dude, that was like, especially that one. Like all these people were like kind of somersaulting out of the way, yeah. and then one just gets impaled yeah. in the stomach, and like for multiple steps. Just, <laughs> I'm like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, but yeah, so <laughs> but it was, I mean, it was a really cool accident. Yeah, That's funny, sure. but it was just like yeah. So this this blue beetle machine just yeah. running through all these guards. Oh God, yeah. Um, and then they make it because they they needed to get to a tunnel entrance because it was mentioned as they were trying to think of a plan mm-hmm. that uh, the grandmother was like a. a uh, revolutionary or something yeah. like that back in her day. Yeah, really, I was just like, when she first picked up the minigun, I was like, all right, so grandma was in the cartel. But yeah. then they, they'd be like, no, no, she's a revolutionary. I was like, oh, okay, cool. She's a revolutionary, <laughs> not cartel. That works. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so she was uh-huh. like, uh, she's, uh, I guess, stage coups before, yeah, uh, yeah. assaulted, uh, did assaults on like uh, castles. What did you, how, what was your thought on Machine Gun Granny? I feel like I, they thought it was cool for the trailer and stuff like that, but it was just like, okay. Yeah, once the movie kind of started, like after a little while, I was like, I don't really like Machine Gun Granny. That yeah, I, I just, like, once again, I think cool for the poster. Yeah, yeah. Fine, whatever. Cool. Yeah. yeah, and like it was like, oh, it's funny, but I was like, mm, it's taken, it took me out of it yeah. a little bit for sure. Yeah. But yeah, so using her instruction, they they, they, they get to this tunnel mm-hmm. where, uh, what's her name, Jenny and the sister go in because they want to. Sh- to uh, shut down the generator or something like that. Something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and this is where, as they're searching through, they find the other Omax being charged by something. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I guess a lot of stuff starts happening. So first, we see that uh, what's his name? Jaime is like be, kind of being like killed by this drain. Mm-hmm. So he goes into this kind of like. Uh, this void. This was weird. This was a weird sequence. Yeah, yeah. Where he sees his dad, but like somebody mentioned, like he wouldn't know that his dad had passed. So like, yeah. what is this? Well, he did say. Well, see, he went. So he must have gone to like truly like an afterlife. Because that's he what I'm saying. In there, and the dad was like, "You know why I'm here? Because he was dead." Yeah, you know, the dad like he had that. Like the dad was like, "You know why you can see me like this?" And then he started crying. So I was like, it was kind of like the dad's spirit or soul telling him. Yeah. That he so was dead. yeah, it was weird. It, it, yeah. It's stuff like that. It, it's like same thing we just did it with the Guardians of the Galaxy or some shit yeah. like that. It was just like. Okay, fine. Yeah, there's, there's an afterlife, apparently, and there's souls that can talk to you. Oh, God, the beavers are going up there, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, yeah, his dad tells him, basically, that this this is your purpose. Your mm-hmm. purpose is to use this gift. Yeah, and like his dad's purpose is like, and it's my purpose to be able to tell you this. And it's like, <laughs> wow, way to discount yourself, man. <laughs> <laughs> your entire life was leading up to this one moment, dying so you can tell your son this one thing. I'm like, Couldn't even tell him in a corporeal form, oh, bro. Yeah. I'm like, mm-mm. <laughs> But yeah, from there you see after he has that moment with his dad, you see kind of a um, an avatar of the Blue Beetle uh, the, suit. This part was, I was like, there was like a galaxy and the galaxy sucking stuff in. Ooh. and There's a giant floating Blue Beetle suit. Yeah. I was like in space. And I was like, what's going on? Yeah. In the <laughs> house, it was one thing, but yeah. the once like the house broke away yeah. and they're like in space land, I was like, okay. But yeah, so yeah. he jumps out at the Blue Beetle avatar, touches the hand, and this is them. And you hear Doctor Sanchez talking about it. it was mm-hmm. like, oh, he's sinking with the he's actually like they've got a symb, symbi, symbiotic relationship yeah. finally mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah um and so like he wakes up i would say it's commensalism 
Okay. There's parasitism. Oh, no, not commensalism. Uh, mutualism. Mutualism. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So he wakes up, and then you also see at the same time that the, the transfer is 100% for Carapax. Mm-hmm. So he, he has the full, yeah. uh, the full powers of the Scarab as well. Uh, Jaime breaks out of his restraints, and then he goes to the door, and uh, Victoria's like, Jaime, uh, not Jaime, sorry, Dr. Sanchez, stop him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, she calls him... No, she's been calling him Sanchez. That's no, 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 no. She was calling him something else. I thought she was calling him Sanchez. No, right? that's why he got mad. Well, yeah, I know he got mad, but I thought it was like, but I thought she was calling him Sanchez. Oh, actually, you're right, because he said something about his last name was like De La Cruz. Yes, exactly. So his like instead it was like very different name. He's like, my name's not oh, Sanchez. Maybe, maybe okay, yeah. maybe maybe I got it wrong. Yeah, I don't know about that. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's because even in the IMDb, they still refer to yes. Dr. Sanchez, not his real name. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You can't use that on the application to get mad that I'm yeah, using yeah, the wrong name, guy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so uh, Jaime goes to the door, but it's locked. Uh, Dr. Sanchez comes over and he lets Jaime out because you've yeah. seen him having a kind of a change of heart. It was like a bit of change of heart, but a bit of also, like, I guess, his scientific mind is just like. We, I really want to study like was, this. I, either way, I thought it was kind of weird. Yeah, it was yeah. a dumb character. It was a dumb character. I think it's because yeah. of the fact that since it, uh, that guy, uh, what's his name? Uh, Harvey is a recognizable face now, mm-hmm. like I said, from what we do in the shadows. Yeah. They got to give him more than a... They need to give him a redemption. It's arc. like the same, the guy from um, fucking <sighs> Superstore was in um, Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, uh, okay. He was yeah. the doctor with the thing in, the, in, the, in his head. Okay. So it's yeah. like because he's somewhat recognizable from something that's popular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's give them something to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair. But at least I think they did it better in Guardians of the Galaxy yeah. than this. Like you could have just let this man stay evil. Like, let him even, like, tap into him being an evil yeah. man scientist. Cool, okay. Granted, like, then who would have let Jaime go, but yeah. you could write around that. But yeah, so yeah. Jaime gets out, um, homeboy closes the door, and he goes, find your family. And I'm just like, bro, Oh, get, he says, get your family out of here. I was like, how y'all know they did? Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, because I guess, well, because the generator did blow up, so maybe they just assumed. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. It yeah. doesn't make sense. But anyway, as he's saying this, uh, Carapax, uh, transfor- like, he yeah. fully transforms into his his red beetle, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, out, like, a battle suit. Yeah. And kills. Just stabs the crap out of this man. <laughs> and so, what happens, what happens, what happens? Jaime uh, finds his... Oh, finds his sister. No, yeah. Jaime is running. No, no, so Jaime is running. He can't use the suit's power. Grandma finds him. And has yes, a that's what it was. And yeah. she like kills a bunch yeah, of Yeah, yeah. So mini-gun. yeah, his granny finds him, gets him back to the ship. Um, to the ship, and he's like, my my sister and Jenny are still out there. I need yeah. to go find them. Mm-hmm. So then he goes to find them regardless. And that's when his, this is when his, when his mom, mom gives him a speech. And she's like, get your shit together, Blue Beetle suit. She's like, you there, Blue Beetle suit. Get your shit together. And fuck it. I'm like, okay, cool. All right. Yeah. Like, but I think the suit wasn't working because it was resetting. Yeah, because it was reset. That's what yeah. it was. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so he goes back out. His sister has some some of the weapons from uh, Ted Cords, like yeah, the former yeah. Blue Beetle stuff. Um, but she's got, kind of being um, pushed back because there's this gunfire or whatever. So Jaime comes out, and we get another scene, just like from in front of the house, where like you mm-hmm. can see the um, the functions and different features of the Blue Beetle. And basically, it's just saying like I can create whatever you can think of. Yeah, which was cool, but also. Once again, overpowered. And over- yeah. I thought this was a cool action sequence. Yeah. Like this, like him fighting the guards the second time with more weapons mm-hmm. and more variety was great. There yeah. was just a lot more action going on, which was like really And cool. I, I get, the sister goes, after he defeats everybody, he goes, she goes, where were you? Yeah. Locked up, dummy. Like, right? Like, it was like about? super weird. I, I yeah. think this, these last moments, mm-hmm. and maybe things were cut, yeah, yeah. but it was just like a lot of things were happening that didn't make sense. Mm-hmm. In the grand scheme of things, oh, yeah, mm-hmm. whatever. But it was just like in the mo- what what you show me in the film. No. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. So the thing with Doctor Sanchez, the thing with his sister, I'm just like the fuck. What? Yeah. What do you mean? Where was I? You were coming to rescue me, dummy. Yeah, exactly. You knew I was rescued. <laughs> like you knew I was fucked up. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so uh, they go to find Jenny, but Jenny's been captured by Victoria because mm-hmm. Victoria's like, oh, we can get the hell out of here. I have the Scarab code. Yeah. Um, and so we get uh, what's his name. Carapax fighting Jaime, but now yep. they're equal because yep. they both have, and this is literally the Iron Man versus uh, Iron, yeah. the dude, Iron Legion or whatever his name yes. was? Yes. Yeah, or right something like that in the yeah, first yeah. one? Mm-hmm. 
Uh, but yeah, slash the second, slash the dude in the second one too when he came out with the whip because it was like yeah, 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 yeah. had a whip and I was like Iron Man two. Oh yeah. shit! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was like Iron Man two whip. Yeah. And the yeah. fatigue sets in. That's yep. what it is. Yeah. But yeah, so like yeah, I mean this was a cool fight I guess, but it was very much we've seen it. Marvel does it all the time. Yeah. The same versus same. It was like him with the Buster Sword was badass. Yes, when like that was yeah that was really cool. And like it had the rockets coming at him. Yeah. Like hell yeah. yeah, I'm always down for a good Buster Sword. Yeah, but yeah, so they fight. Uh, Jaime is kind of getting over like overpowered. Jaime got cat. Hame was yes, winning, and, and that's even cocky. even the suit is like yo chill chill, yeah, chill. He's like bro this ain't over yet yeah and so he gets cocky and kind of gets uh, is about to get taken out but Rudy comes and de- kind of distracts uh, yeah, yeah. Carapax who just he's like standing on top of this like bridge or something like that mm-hmm. and Carapax just shoots him <laughs> <laughs> and like Jaime gets a, a surge of rage because yeah. obviously he's Motivated by family. Yep. Fucking Vin Diesel. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Um, curious. Uh, so so he, Jaime starts moving a lot faster, a lot more furious. <laughs> <laughs> and so fueled by the, his perceived death of, uh, of Rudy, he uh, def- you know, knocks out, mm-hmm. uh, is able to, like, he just keeps punching and punching and punching. Yeah. Uh, punches even his helmet off. Yep. I yeah. think this was weird for me a little bit. It was like, so you see, and I get why mm-hmm. theatrically, right? So it was like, Carapax had punched Jaime so hard that half the mask came off. Yeah. But it was just like, one eye was up here yeah, from the mask. Yeah, that was weird. And his eye was down here. And I'm yeah. just like, what do we do? Yeah, it was not. <laughs> it was, since it was lopsided. But I mean, when you're wearing the mask, technically it doesn't matter, I guess. It does, because it was like, that means that the eyesight is up here. Nah, nah, but you're wearing the mask, though. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but it was like, obviously, to show the dichotomy and duality between the the two yeah. that are that are one. And so, in this, like, like in the first showdown... Uh, Jaime incapacitates uh, what's his name uh, Carapax mm-hmm. and but this time he goes to try to kill him yeah in order to re- uh, avenge his father and Rudy yep yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and the he, he's about to stab him and the suit stops him yes and says we're not killers yeah yeah, yeah. Which and, is nice and then you also she's uh, the, the suit says as we were linked mm-hmm. during the drain or whatever, I got to see this man's backstory. Yeah. And this is when you see flashbacks of, like, um, Carapax basically um, losing his family to, like, some war in, like, Guatemala, I believe. I believe so. That's what they're saying. Um, his mom's house was, uh, was bombed and she was killed. And then mm-hmm. he got recruited as a child soldier by, yeah. by uh, Victoria. Yeah. So, also, for like, so, oh, she wasn't evil until the father <laughs> passed away. <laughs> She's recruiting children's soldiers. Like, no, to no, experiment evil. so that she could recreate, recreate this scrap scar- yeah, technology. That's what I'm saying. Like, no, she's evil. All right, no, she's evil. It was like, yeah, this is like let people be evil. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. But it was like once again, I saw this and I'm like, where's that story? Yeah, that was pretty. Like cool. that was amazing. I mean, we just got a flash of a few scenes, but it was like, what a story! Like, and you see, like he's a hardened man. Yeah. Clearly, he kept trying to punch Jenny in the face. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's what it's what life does to you. All right. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so he decides not to, mm-hmm. uh, not to kill Carapax and they kind of stand up and he says the corniest shit obviously because it's the film he was like you said that my family mm-hmm. my family makes me weak but that that's what makes me strong and I'm just like ugh yep <laughs> <laughs> like, ugh. Yeah. I'm like alright yeah uh, at the same time Victoria is escaping on a helicopter with Jenny uh, with the code or whatever mm-hmm. Jenny uses some uh, bubblegum technology that her father had yeah. um I assumed it was explosive. Yeah, that's what I thought. thought too. Yeah, but no, it was like, but it was it was like basically a, just a, a <laughs> foam to protect you from being from tall heights tossed out of a fucking uh, helicopter. Yeah, but they land on the ground. Helicopter crashes, and um, Jenny smashes the phone with the mm-hmm. code. Yeah, yeah, so that Victoria can't recreate mm-hmm. um, the scarab technology, and then she tells. Uh, Carapax, uh, sorry, Victoria tells mm-hmm. Carapax to kill both yeah. Jenny and Jaime. And instead, he tells them to get out of there, and he drags her <laughs> into the fire. Into the fire, and he mm-hmm. sets his um, like the basically the self destruct on his suit, mm-hmm. so that he can not only kill her but all of the Omax. Yeah. So that that technology couldn't be used to um to take over the world, basically. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And then the family gets out of there. They make it out of the fire, you know, Millennium Falcon style. Um, and when they're in the when they're in the the, the beetle flying away mm-hmm. the grandmother says now we can cry yeah and I was just like more cry oh <laughs> it was like I was getting upset it was too much heart for me I was like oh my God. <laughs> this is why I like solo vigilante I was like I just saw Batman it was like this is why I work alone man <laughs> so, oh you're starting to feel emotions again <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah so the family 
console each other because obviously um, the Alberto, uh, the dad, had passed away. Um, next, we see them at his uh, coming home from his funeral mm -hmm. and to the burned down house. Um, and they're you know thinking about like what are we gonna do? How are we gonna fix this? Because yeah. uh, Cord still owns this, and at the same time we see uh, Jenny. Mm -hmm. Now that but like, all the neighbors come too. I know, but oh, it's just okay. at the same time. But it was oh, like yeah, yeah. as the family is talking about the 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 house or whatever, Jenny's doing a, a press conference. Oh yeah, the press conference. Saying that she's um yeah. she now she's gonna run court. They're not gonna do weapons anymore. Yeah, so they're gonna find ways. The one give. Uh, the city back to the people, mm -hmm. and she's she's gonna basically help follow her father's visions. Yeah. And then at the same so time, that's when you want to start shorting the stock because this is gonna make no money. <laughs> Cord Cord is gonna make no money. Start <laughs> sell, it. sell, yeah, sell, 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 and short. All right. <laughs> this is when you sell. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, and at the same time, um, the family, uh, the neighborhood comes mm -hmm. to like console the family. Did you see that one dude with his shirt off? I was like, what the fuck? That's a fucking respect. What? A man. Has died. He just strolls up to the memorial park shirtless. <laughs> Nips like, out. Yeah. Like, kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was the only thing I looked at. <laughs> but yeah, so and you see that, I mean, it's very much saying that the community, not only just family, but your family extends past, you know, the people in your house, the people in your, you know, that are related to you type of thing. So it was like the community came to support them, yeah. console them, try to help them rebuild. Um, so as they're having a little barbecue on the lawn, uh, Jenny, Jenny comes um, to uh, give uh, Rudy a new truck, mm -hmm. um, and then you know basically tell them that she's gonna court is gonna fix the house, yeah. and give you know give the house you know basically the city back like she was saying in the press conference yeah. give the city back to the people. Well, so for the record, the house still belongs to the landlord. <laughs> So, like, I'm just glad the landlord is getting what he's owed because his house was destroyed for no reason. That poor landlord. <laughs> uh, fucking compass. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, so, and then after that, like, um, you know, Jaime, you know, walks her to her car and he's, like, you know, saying, like, when will I see you again type of thing. Yeah. They finally kiss. Yeah. It, it, it is a good kiss. It's a good kiss. Um, and uh, and he's also like, hey, do you want to get out of here from his own father's memorial party? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, hey, I guess I didn't realize that part. Yeah, I'm just like, dude, you're at your father's memorial party and you're like, now nah, I'm a bail so I can go bang this chick. I'm like, no, bro. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I forgot about that last part. Okay. Yeah. And then he burns his nice clothes. <laughs> just L upon L. And it was like, at the same time, it's like just like Venom, where you hear uh, uh, the the suit saying, "I feel all the blood rushing to your mid region." He's like, "Shut up, hey, 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 hey!" <laughs> and so yeah, they kiss. Uh, the family is sitting there watching them. Oh yeah. And he just they fly off uh, yeah. back to because she's you know going back to. Um, her dad's, uh, her childhood home, you mm -hmm. know, because she, you know, she missed her mom's paintings and stuff like that. Yeah. That's how the movie, and there was a post-credit scene. I did not watch it. Post-credit scene was uh, since the computer and terminal back at the uh, mansion for mm -hmm. the, of Ted's Blue Beetle yeah. area got turned back on, he could then pass on a message. And yeah. he was like, hey, I'm still alive. I'm sorry. I'm still alive. So, yeah, tell my daughter I'm still alive. Yeah, so basically he was Ant-Man doing it, or Ant-Man wanting it, or whatever the quantum, remember when, like, the woman comes back from the quantum realm? That was the second one. That was the second one. Yeah, because we watched Ant-Man 3. Yeah. So Ant Man two. So then this one, Blue Beetle, you know, two will be like. So is he trapped in the quantum realm? Uh, he's trapped in the Blue Beetle realm. <laughs> I don't know actually, but he just said, "Hey, <laughs> I'm trapped." Or he said, "Like I'm trapped and I need help or something like that." Yeah, so that's what the sequel's setting up for. Yeah, right. and yeah. that is the end of the movie. And that is the end of the movie. Uh, since we are a little bit longer, was there any likes or dislikes we didn't really touch on? No, I already said um, the. I did enjoy like the family dynamic. I think, like I said, I, after a while, I was like, "We get it. We, yeah. Like you don't have to keep hammering it." Um, I did enjoy the performance from uh, uh, Jaime, mm -hmm. and the visuals, the suit was great, yeah. yeah. My dislikes was just, like, I was a little bored, if I'm mm -hmm. not going to lie. Yep. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. um, even some of the fight scenes, like, it wasn't like it was a fair fight type mm -hmm. of thing. Yeah. Uh, so with some of the guards, even with, um, what's his name, Kyle Pax, it was just, I don't, I don't know, it was just, like, lacking in a, in a way. I was just... Very bored. Visually, visually, it looked great, but it was okay. like this. Like I said, the story was like just. There just really weren't stakes. Yeah. Yeah. Fair. Because also, if you have a suit that can't mm -hmm. is impenetrable, like what? What's? I think maybe that's why they're bringing the family because it's like that's the only way to hurt him. Yeah, exactly. Is yeah, kill his fam. Yeah. And a weak villain. Oh, yeah. it's something I didn't like, but yeah, yeah, those are my likes and dislikes. Yeah, likes. Um, yeah, we already talked basically about all my likes. Yeah, dislikes. 
not going to beat a dead horse, um, but it's, you know, it's a story that's been told, so it wasn't really new. And then I grew with, like, some of the weaker villains and just some of the turns. Like, Dr. Sanchez could have just stayed evil. You know, Victoria, we, we didn't even need to say Victoria used to be good at any point. Just let her be evil the whole time. Mm -hmm. I'm cool with that. But, yeah, but all in all, uh, so now revisiting our review, you gave it a two and a half out of five. Are you keeping it? Are you changing it? What do you think? Yes. Keeping. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Two and a half. And I'm going to keep my three. I think it was still a pretty solid movie, and I'd say, hey, go check it out. But, you know, there are, there have been better superhero movies in the past, and I hope there will be more superhero Because it was like, yeah. I think I like this, no, I like Transformers a little bit better. Because like now, as ranking mm. shit, I got to like, fair. Yeah. I'm ranking it before seeing something else. Yeah, <laughs> fair. So yeah, it's yeah. like, shit. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. But anyway. But anyway, thank you so much for listening, everybody. Again, we are The Meddling Kids. If you'd like to reach out to us, you can find us at 2 Meddling Kids on Twitter and Instagram, or you can email us at 2 meddlingkids.com at gmail.com. Mike, how can they reach out to you? On Instagram at Days from Legendary. And if you'd like to reach out to me, I'm at EdHunt77 on Instagram and Twitter, and Hunt.comics on Instagram. We'll see you next week with a brand new video. Bye. Catch everybody.